that's also an important one. So if you compare that to before, in QPPM, we couldn't say anything about the audio. We couldn't say how loud the program was. We couldn't say what the true peak level was. And we couldn't say how dynamic the program was. Now we have three parameters that actually do that. They fully characterize the audio signal. How loud it is, program loudness. What's the maximum true peak level? And how dynamic is it, loudness range? So we really can say something about the audio with these three parameters now. And we can use those three parameters to you know, base our decisions whether this signal would be appropriate for our audience. Yeah. In addition to these three parameters that we define in R128, we also define this new common loudness level where everything should be balanced to. And you've certainly heard about that. It's minus 23. You know the unit by now, LUFS, minus 23 LUFS. There's a lot of discussion has been going on why it's minus 23, but maybe we can talk about the question on the answer period about that. So we arrived at this number, and that arguably is now the center of our audio universe, minus 23. And when you compare it to the average level of Europe of today, it's a little bit lower. The average level of Europe is around minus 20 or maybe minus 21. If you take all broadcast stations and radio and TV in Europe and average all over the place, it's around minus 20, minus 21. This is, by the way, also reflected in the Dolby Digital System where you have one uh, mode that normalizes everything to minus 20. So also Dolby has already done these investigations many years before. So when we now talk about minus 23, it's lower, yes. You have to be aware that we will be a little bit lower in level than in the past. And if you uh, saw before that the average level of Spanish television is about minus 18 or minus 19, you will be 4 dB or 4 LU lower, yes. You have to be aware of that. And that, of course, will bring a lot of discussions inside the companies too, you know, because it is very, usually people are very reluctant to bring the level down. But, you know, over the years we have pushed so much that it's time to back off again to allow more dynamic range now. It's time to get back to audio quality. Okay, program loudness minus 23. We have a certain tolerance of plus minus 1 LU, which, of course, you need for programs where you cannot, uh, after the fact, you know, just make a file-based gain manipulation. So that is for live programs, for instance, you need a tolerance. And you might think that plus minus one LU is very tight. And that is mu very much on purpose. We really wanted to have it very tight because also experience tells us of you know, mixes that already work with loudness meters that it's not too difficult to stay within the tolerance. Why? Because once you start to work with a loudness meter, you are totally encouraged to mix with the best loudness meter that everybody has, and that's your pair of ears with this gray mass in between, which we call our brain. So the, our hearing is the best loudness meter, and a loudness meter on your desk encourages you to mix with your ears, and your ears are remarkably good of balancing out everything so that at the end of the program you are within the tolerance. So if you think that's too tight, wait until you have experience. It's not really too difficult to hit that. In addition to this common loudness level, we have introduced a so-called gating method. <coughs> Excuse me. A gating method, what do we do with that? We measure the so-called foreground loudness. What is that? That would be dialogue, speech, singing voice, strong music or whatever, very strong sound effects that would be sounds in the foreground. And why do we want to do that? Let me illustrate that to you also with an animation. Here you would have, for instance, a program like a news with narrow dynamic range, not much loudness variation. <coughs> and the average loudness would be something like here, in that case, minus 23. Now we have another program that would look like that. That could be a uh, film, feature film, 
or that could be, for instance, a tennis match, you know, with while they play, it's low in level, and then big crowd goes wild. Yeah? And the average loudness of this program would be around here. The low level parts bring the level down, the high level parts bring it up, and on average it's here. So now, if we normalize the two to the same loudness level, we have a problem. <coughs> we have a perceived loudness difference because we judge the loudness depending on the foreground sounds, on the loud parts. Yeah? So it turned out that for dynamic programming, we had to do something. Because if we just measure the loudness without anything else, those dynamic programs are too loud after normalization. So what would we do? Let's get back to the beginning. If we could find a way to just measure those loud parts and discard the soft parts here, gating out the soft parts, then we would have solved it. And that's exactly what we do. So we gate out the soft parts and the perceived loudness difference goes away. And that was basically most of the subjective listening tests that we did in PLoud were concerned with what is the ideal gating solution. And we arrived at a gate of minus 8 LU below the ungated one. So there is a threshold minus 8 LU below the ungated one, and everything below that is discarded from the loudness measurement. Yeah? We nicely called that the gate. Yeah. 8 LU, gate, nice play of words and numbers. We also submitted that idea of relative gating to the ITU because ideally this extension of the algorithm belongs to the loudness algorithm, to ITU 1770. And in the last meeting in October of the ITU in Geneva, this was accepted. The relative gating is now going into 1770. But there was a lot of discussion about whether minus 8 would be the right threshold. And it turns out that we have to abandon the minus 8. And it's going to be replaced by 10 LU below the ungated loudness measurement, which we are very happy with. Because in our listening tests, 8 and 10 were so close together that it's not really a big difference. Anyway, you can expect that a relative gate <laughs> is going into 1770, which is exactly what we wanted. We didn't want to have a proprietary EBU solution. It's now on its way into 1770, so it's an international standard also as far as this is concerned. And you can expect that to be released some beginning of March, so only in a few weeks the revision of 1770 should be out where the relative gate is in. And once that is done, of course, we will also revise R128 and our relevant tech documents 3341. 